I wanted to share with you this morning, um, and because of time, I'm just going to cut it a bit short. On, Jan, on John chapter 15, if you can put that up for us, that'll be great. John chapter 15, and we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 17, but um, don't be fearful, right? I'm not going to keep you here long, but John chapter 15 verse 1 says these words, Jesus is speaking, he says, I am the true vine. Church, I want to make it very clear that all other prophets, all other human idols say they speak of the truth. Jesus is the only one that said, I am the truth. All other religions have, we speak of the life. Jesus says, no, 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 I am the life. He's the son of God, God who professes who he is. Now he comes and he says, I am the true vine. Make sure that you understand there is no other vine except him. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. The second verse really got me. You see, I grew up wanting to live like Jesus wants me to live. I grew up in church. I grew up in a congregation that set out, and last week we talked about you are saved by grace, not out of your own works, to do the works that, predest- that were predestined for you to do. And I grew up in this, and Lord, I want to I, I wanna do these works, and I want to bear fruit, and, and I want to bring... And then in, 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 my, in, my, in my late teens, early 20s, I came across this verse and it says, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. <laughs> you, you, know, you, know, you know what did that, that did to me? Man, I went into overdrive performance mode. Do you understand what I'm saying? He cuts off every branch. Listen to how he says, in me that doesn't bear fruit. I said, God, I'm in you. Jesus, I believe I'm in you. Jesus, I believe I'm part of you. Man, I need to bear fruit. I need to, you know, I need to work this thing. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt, I want to do what you want me to do, Jesus, and I want to live that you want me to live, and and, and now this is, you know. He says, every branch of me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. So if 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 you bear fruit, then you are pruned. And if you don't bear fruit, you are cut off. Man, that put me in a span. Can I just say, that took me out of rest. That put me in a place of performance, running, doing, trying to achieve, trying to do, trying to produce. Because I don't want to be cut off. I don't want to be cut off. I want to, I want to be part. And that took me on a journey to try and understand this. How do, we, how do we say I'm in Christ? Every branch that's in me, I'm in Christ. How does he cut me off when I'm in him? Does that make sense to you? That doesn't make sense to me. And then, I was fortunate enough to get hold of the Greek the Greek Bible, right? And the Greek Bible says this. He says, the word that he uses there for cut off is the word aero, like arrow, like chocolate. <laughs> a, only A-I-R-O, not A-E-I-R-O, all right? Not chocolate, not aero, not, all right? Do they have arrows here in Australia? I'm not sure. They do, right? Okay. So, so that's the Greek word, Iro. And you know what that means? You know what that word means? That word means he 
raises up, lift up, picks up off the ground. Church, I want to say this to you. That changes that whole sentence. That changes my understanding. That means if I'm in Christ, I don't know about you, but, but there are seasons in my life that I feel I'm bearing fruit and it prunes me and there's fruit and there are seasons in my life where I feel, man, God, I'm struggling. Jesus, I need you. God, I, I, I just need you more. And then he says this. He says, he lifts up. It's the same word. It's the same words that is, that, 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 that is used when the enemy talks to Jesus and says, the angels will lift you up. They will carry you so that you do not bump your foot against a stone. It's the same word that Peter used when he looked at the blind man and said these words. He says, pick up your bed, lift up your bed and walk. It's the same word. It's as if he says, Jesus, he raises up, lifts up, picks up every branch in me that bears no fruit. In other words, what he's saying to you is this, do not disqualify yourself or come to a place where you disqualify yourself. Know that if you are in me, I lift you up. Now there are some of you looking at me and say, are you serious? I can't be more serious. I can't be more serious. And every branch in me that's in me that does bear fruit, he prunes so that he can be more fruitful. Church, do you understand why there are so many things in our lives trying to move us away from the rest of God? Trying to make, put us in a performance mode where we work and try to achieve something outside of Christ. Do you understand why there's so many things craving for your attention, craving to, to, to move you away from the place where you can say, be still and know? Do you understand why the enemy wants you to try to make you focus on you and not on the true vine Jesus Christ, because he understands that when he gets your focus away from him, you will be on your own, trying to do it on your own. It's impossible to produce fruit on your own. We're going to see that. Jesus says to them, verse 3, you are already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. He says this, remain in me. I think the, 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 the old King James talks about abide. Abide in me, remain in me as I also remain in you. He says no branch can be fruit by itself, it must remain in the vine, neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So what should your focus be? To bear fruit? Should that be the focus? So what should be the focus? To remain in Him. Church, that is awesome news. That is amazing news. That is freeing. That is walk with me and work with me and learn from me and see how I do it. Do what? See how I do life. Last week we said, do we still agree that the Bible is relevant for today? Do we still believe that the Bible is relevant in 2022 with our deadlines and our works and our programs and our, and all our multimedia and everything that wants to speak to us? Is, is that still relevant for today? If we say yes, then we gotta agree that when Jesus says, walk with me, work for, with me, uh, see how I do it, that we live our lives the way he lived his life. Remain in him without haste without hurry without confusion remain in him 
Verse 5 says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. When I was younger and I read that, that, that really didn't make sense to me because I felt like, Jesus, I can do a lot of things. I can do a lot of things. Uh, it, do you agree? Without me, you can do nothing. No, no, no. There, there's some things that I can do. Very arrogant. Again, what is meant by that is without me, you, will, you won't be able to produce anything. You cannot produce fruit without me. And what is it that changes people's lives when they, when they get in contact with us? It is the fruit on our lives that they pick, that they partake of, that changes them. Because it's not our fruit, it is his fruit. It's his fruit in us to them. A, a simple question. An apple tree, does he bear apples for himself? Does he bear apples and he say, let me taste of my sweet apples. Oh, I've got such beautiful apples, let me taste of them. No, man. <laughs> but people come and they taste of the apples that this apple tree produces. And exactly that's what Jesus is saying. He says, when you remain in me, when you are in me, when you stay in me, you will be able to produce something that gives life to people when they meet you. Amen! That is what I want to be. I want to be this person that when I connect with people, that they love Jesus more than what they did when we first met. When they walk away from me, they must experience Jesus and God's life. That is why we said we cannot start with our works. We cannot start with where we are. We've got to start with in Christ. Now the verse that's so many times quoted, when I quote verse 2, and I, and I start to headbutt with with, with, with some religious people, they, they, they say, yeah, yeah, but if you do not remain in me, you're like a branch that is thrown away and with us, such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. That is true. Listen to what it says. If you do not remain in me. So who makes that decision? We do. We make the decision and say, I am not in Christ anymore. You know what that says? I choose to do my own thing. I walk away from the source of life. Now I'm going to do it my way. Where does that get you? <laughs> you know where that gets you? Dead. Dead branch. Who's unable to produce? Unable to do anything? And it says this. It says, those branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you are outside of Christ, if you make the decision to step away from Christ, if you make the decision to walk away from Him, you are a dead branch, unable to produce anything. So that is why it's important that you understand religion cannot save you. The do's and the don'ts cannot save you. The, 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 the obeying of laws cannot save you. The doing of the commands cannot save you. The doing the good works that were predestined, that cannot save you. Remain in Christ. I love it when the young people start to speak and the young kids just start to agree. <laughs> if you remain in me, I don't think I'll get to verse 17, but if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. You know, that word remains, remain in me. 
It's the same word that Paul uses when he says this words in, in Romans chapter 1 and 2. Chap, chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, sorry. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, he says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform. So the word conform, he says, remain in me. He, he's conform to my way of living. That is, to, that is to remain. Remain in me. Conform to me. He says, he says do not conform. Do not, do not remain in the pattern of this world. Do not stay there. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Change the way you see. Then you will be able to test and prove what God's will is, His good and perfect will. This is exactly what Jesus is saying. If you remain in me, you will ask whatever, and my Father will do what you ask. Because you remain in Him, His will remain in you. Does that make sense? In closing... Verse 8, this is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples, showing yourselves to look like Him. And as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. Listen to what He says, church. Remain in my love. Remain, conform to my love. Stay in my love. And this is where we... Head but again with a lot of religious folk. If you keep my commands, yeah, 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 but we've got to understand there's a lot of commands. There's, a, there, there's some commands, you know, that, that we've got to, he's, just read with me. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. So remain in my love just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. And I've told you this, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Why did he say our joy will be complete? If we... Stay in his commands. If we remain in his love, what is these commands? He says, my command is this. In case you wonder, in case you get confused by a whole of religious stuff, this is my command. Love each other as I have loved you. Jesus is saying, it is impossible for you to love your neighbor if, you, if my love don't remain in you. Jesus is saying, you can try as much as you like, but this is my command. My command is love your neighbor. That's my command. How do I do that? I need to remain in his love. It sounds a lot like love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength. I love my neighbor as myself. I must be honest with you, that is quite freeing. Love God, love people. Will you preach that with me just, just for a second? Look at the person next to you and say, love God and love me. <laughs> love each other. <laughs> love God and love people. It ends in verse 17. Please go, 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 go and read it. But it ends in verse 17 with, this is my command. Love each other. If there is one thing, church, that I did see over this period is that when people move away from the love of God and move away from the remaining in Him and trying to think things through and trying to work it all out with our minds, one thing that I did see is we get into struggles and pains and fights with people around us. We, 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 we get to in arguments, we get in, in, in confusion, we get in, the moment we step away from remaining in Him, we start to fight with each other. Isn't that true? And God is saying, if you're worn out, if you're burned out, and if you've done everything you can do, come back to me. Remain in me. Because if you remain in me, my command is love other people.
Can we close our eyes for a second? Now, like I said to you, we've started this service this morning all the other way around. So I'm not going to make any altar call or anything this morning. All I'm going to do is I'm going to pray for us. Is that okay? So where you are, maybe just close your eyes. Heavenly Father, thank you that you call us to remain in you. We understand that that isn't even possible out of our own choice because your word says, I have chosen you. You did not choose me. So Lord, we can't even boast in the fact that we chose you. We can only boast in the fact that you chose us and you've accepted us and you have pulled us into yourself so that we can remain in you. Father, our heart's desire is that as we love you and as we love people, that the fruit on our lives will speak to people and that they will be refreshed and renewed through the fruit that you give. Our heart's desire is, Father, that their lives will change as our life change as we remain in you. In Jesus' name. The church says, Amen. Amen. Amen.